Hey there, it's Spencer from FolkFungi.com. So, as you may know, growing oyster mushrooms in a bucket is a super popular technique, mainly because it's really easy to do and you can get some great results from it. But did you know that you can also grow the glorious lion's mane mushroom in a bucket as well? As you can see, it's clearly possible, and not only that, it's just as easy as growing oyster mushrooms in a bucket. And I get super, super excited about this technique because it's so easy for anyone to do. You don't need any specialized or fancy equipment at all. Basically, all you need is a bucket, a drill, some hardwood fuel pellets, some lion's mane grain spawn, and some micropore tape. That's it. No pressure cookers, there's no sterilization needed, no pasteurization needed, just cold water. It's super fun, super easy, and you can get some great results. So let's jump into it. So in this video, we're going to be working with an 8 liter bucket. And the first thing you need to do is to cut holes in your bucket from which the mushrooms will grow. There are two options here and I'll cover them both. Option one is to use a hole saw to cut two holes into the bucket. Here I'm using a two inch hole saw, but you could use a smaller hole saw as well. For example, a one inch one would work just fine. After you cut both holes into your bucket, this is what it should look like. Option two is to use a drill bit, like a quarter inch drill bit, and cut a series of holes near the top of the bucket. You don't want to cut holes near the bottom of the bucket because you want to give space for the mushroom to grow. If you go down the route of option number two, this is what the bucket should look like after you're done drilling. In this video, we're going to grow our lion's mane mushrooms in a bucket with two large holes made by the hole saw. The reason I like this method best is, in my experience, the fruiting bodies tend to be larger with a large hole. If you go the route of a series of small holes, it still works well, but I just find that you get a series of smaller fruiting bodies. So to some degree, it's a matter of preference. Also, if you go the route of the small holes, it's a little bit easier because you don't need a hole saw for one, and you also don't need micropore tape which takes us to our next step. So if you've cut two large holes into your bucket, you'll want to cover both of them with some micropore tape. And this does a few things. So when your bucket is full of the substrate, which will eventually fruit mushrooms, this tape will help keep the moisture in, which is really important. And because it's micropore tape and it's breathable, it will allow the mushroom mycelium to breathe and stay healthy. It will also help block out any contaminants, which is really important when your substrate is first colonizing. You want to block out any contaminants. With the series of small holes, you can use micropore tape, but it's not 100% necessary because the holes are so small it's unlikely that they'll lose enough moisture to negatively affect your grow. So the next step is to prepare our substrate. Lion's mane mushrooms love hardwood, so we're going to work with hardwood fuel pellets. The beauty of hardwood fuel pellets is that they're super cheap and they're already partly sterilized. So the process in which sawdust is turned into fuel pellets involves a lot of heat and that kills off a lot of contaminants which makes it really easy to grow mushrooms using fuel pellets. We don't need any fancy sterilization equipment like a pressure cooker or anything like that. We can just use these fuel pellets and we're going to add some water to hydrate them so that the mushrooms will grow. If you're using an 8 liter bucket you'll want to add 1,440 grams of hardwood fuel pellets into a clean mixing container. Then you'll want to add 2.2 liters of water. This equals a hydration rate of approximately 60%, which is perfect for growing mushrooms.
Next, you'll want to add the lid back to your mixing container and let the water soak into the pellets for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, open the lid from the mixing container and your pellets should look something like this, nice and dark and hydrated. Then you'll want to start mixing the pellets and the key here is just to get an even distribution of water and this is really important for your mushrooms to grow properly. So you just want to get your hands deep in there, mix around, make sure to get to the bottom of the container and the corners and just mix thoroughly like I'm doing here. And after you're done mixing, just put the lid back on and let it sit for 15 more minutes. After 15 minutes, open the lid and add your Lion's main Grain Spawn. I'm going to add 1500 grams of spawn, which makes the spawn rate of this recipe approximately 40%. That means that the weight of the Grain Spawn equals 40% of the combined weight of the water and pellets. This is a high spawn rate and not totally necessary but it will help the substrate colonize quickly and it will also lead to a higher yield and reduce contamination risk. If you want, feel free to cut the spawn rate in half to 20%, which equals 750 grams of spawn. So dump your spawn into the container and mix thoroughly. This is really important. You want the spawn to be mixed evenly within the substrate. So it's just kind of like when you mixed to get the water distributed evenly, you want to mix really thoroughly to get the grain spawn mixed evenly. Now we're really getting to the fun part. We're going to add our mixture into our bucket and this is really straightforward. I just use a scoop. If you use a scoop, just make sure that it's nice and clean and then just scoop to fill your bucket to the top. And lastly, Add and secure your lid to your bucket. So the next step is colonization. So for this step you'll want to have your bucket in a reliably dark space. So here I have my bucket in a closet without any windows and this creates a really good environment for colonization which is essentially the process of the mycelium branching its way throughout the hydrated wood and completely taking it over. And once it's done that, mushrooms will be ready to fruit. The speed of colonization depends on a few factors, including spawn rate. We have a really high spawn rate, so it shouldn't take more than a week or two for the mycelium to completely colonize the substrate. Life got really busy and I left the bucket in for three weeks instead of a week or two. And guess what? A lion's mane fruiting body just burst right through the tape. So just to reiterate, this wasn't planned. The idea is to take the bucket out before mushrooms start growing. But this lion's mane had different plans. It just wanted to start growing. And lion's mane is really notorious for this. It will start growing fruiting bodies before the substrate is even fully colonized. If I flip the bucket around, you'll see that the other hole did not have this issue. No mushrooms burst right through the tape. The next step is to remove the tape. So let's say that you let your substrate colonize for a week or two. You'd maybe want to just lift up one piece of tape to see if you could see that white mycelium growth. Here I'm taking off all the tape because I know it's colonized because mushrooms are already growing from it. But you'll want to just look for that white mycelium growth which you can see here. And if you can see that white mycelium growth on your substrate, 
it is ready to fruit mushrooms. And for the mushroom that has already started to grow, I'm just going to remove the tape as delicately as I can. This fruiting body will grow into a much bigger mushrooms when we put it in the proper environment. Again, this isn't what I was aiming to do, it's just what happened. So I'm just going to take the tape away as delicately as I can. The next step is the fruiting stage. So you'll want to put your bucket on some kind of tray or plate to catch dripping water because we're going to be spraying water every day to help the mushroom grow. Another thing to consider is you want to have your bucket in some area that receives indirect light. Direct light isn't ideal because it can hamper growth, but indirect light is really helpful because it signals to the mycelium that it's time to fruit mushrooms. Next, I'm going to throw a humidity tent over my bucket, and this will help retain humidity when we spray every day. So this is just a clear bag with a series of holes for air exchange. If you don't have one of these tents or the materials to make one, it's not a big deal. It just helps maintain humidity. But if you spray every day just around the mushroom, that will be enough humidity for it to grow. And as you can see, this mushroom started growing in a dark room without any added humidity. So it shouldn't be a big deal if you don't have a tent. And of course, if you have a different kind of fruiting chamber, like a shotgun fruiting chamber or a Martha grow tent, this bucket will grow just perfectly in one of those. Also, if you want to grow outside, it is very possible. Just make sure the temperature is above around 15 or 16 degrees Celsius. Make sure the bucket is in a shady space and that you provide enough humidity if it's not rainy or naturally humid out. To create humidity, I'm just going to lift up the tent and spray around with a spray bottle on the inside walls of the tent and on the bucket a little bit. And I'm going to do that several times a day. It's been about a week of spraying my bucket and I have this really, really nice fruiting body which is ready to harvest. It's funny, if you look on the one hole, we have this tiny little fruiting body, and then on the other hole, we have this huge one. For you, it might take a little bit longer than a week to grill your mushroom, since mine already started to grow in the closet. It typically takes around a week or two. And here you can see the nice spines. They're just maybe a couple millimeters long. I could let them grow for another day or so, but I like harvesting them at this length. To harvest your mushrooms, it's really simple. You just want to twist a little bit. The mushroom is delicate, so make sure not to press too hard. And there I have it, really easy. There's actually some tape left over there too. And this is what the fruiting body looks like. Pretty glorious. I'm excited to put this on a scale to see how much it weighs. But before I weigh it, I need to harvest my little tiny lion's mane. So I'm going to twist that off here. And there we go, my tiny little baby lion's mane. I have a bowl on the scale here, and I'm gonna turn my scale on and put the first fruiting body on. And let's see how much it weighs. It is 447 grams, so almost a pound. And let's add the little baby mushroom in, and we're up to 456. And the beautiful thing about this method is that the mushrooms aren't done growing yet. So what I'm going to do to prepare them to grow again is just spray both of the holes because they might have dried out a little bit. So we want to get some moisture in there and we're going to put it back under the humidity tent, spray it every day and within a week or two we're going to get some more mushrooms growing. 